Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. And today I'm just going to be talking about the books that I have read this week. Um, and uh, yeah, they've been, <laughs> it's been a good one. I, I don't know why I'm doing this sort of like faffing around thing as if it's been a mixed bag. These have been some really interesting books. So let's get started on those. First up, after putting it off for a very long time, I read Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton. And I've still not read The Luminaries, but that is very much on my list to try and get to. Um, but Burnham Wood largely is preoccupied with um, a central idea around, um, essentially around like the environment, around funding, and sort of where that, you know, the kind of ethics around certain parts of funding um, and sort of modern day capitalism and various other things all kind of interwoven. Um, but whereas that might sound a bit preachy in some ways, I think what actually works really well about the book is that it sort of takes those various viewpoints and it sort of crystallises it into a group of characters operating in a very specific way. So we have this group of characters who live in this sort of communal area called Burnham Wood. Um, and they are sort of, it's a sort of democratic structure. There aren't really leaders, but then I think as the book teases out, leaders are kind of still exist very much within this framework um and they are trying to operate this thing uh, you know this this sort of project and they see it as a really valuable thing but there is some external funding that comes in um that seems to have some sort of ethical consideration attached to it in some form and this book then sort of pivots quite quickly into essentially a bit of a thriller um in some ways a big part of what happens next in the book is this sort of tale of almost corporate intrigue and, you know, kind of corruption and um, sort of, you know, just sort of covering up, um, covering up evidence and all that kind of stuff. So it's very quickly turns into this um, almost sort of high stakes um, drama. And I think that's what I found really interesting about this book and not quite what I expected that it was going to do, actually, especially from the opening pages where I think, um, you know, the book starts to set out its kind of uh, set out its stool about where it might be going and the kind of the politics of it. But I think actually what's interesting about this book is it kind of allows um, the all of the characters and their politics to be critiqued in some form. So um, we see this democratic structure um, and we, we're sort of presented with it almost as this sort of utopian ideal. But then we see that there are flaws within that, that not only is that financially not sustainable, but also that people... Um, say one thing and perhaps do another. Um, we then also see uh, the kind of, you know, the typical villain of a kind of thrillery story like this, almost like in a James Bond film, where you get the sort of the super wealthy villain who is just sort of plotting to destroy the world and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've got that kind of figure, but actually there are some, some shades of grey attached to his um, character and he becomes this really interesting character I think where he also unpicks some of the politics of, of that world and so I think this is a really interesting book in, in many ways it's very layered and for a book that's 400 odd pages I found myself really tearing through this and really devouring it particularly sort of once it got a bit more thrillery um, so yeah I, I'm really pleasantly surprised by this book and um, I yeah I really greatly enjoyed it. Next up, I read The Five Sorrowful Mysteries of Andy Africa by Stephen Buoro. Um, and this is a bit of a wild ride of a book. Uh, so essentially, I mean, but the opening pages of this book are kind of wild. So we have this character, um, Andrew Aziza, but he's sort of known by lots of people um, within the book as Andy Africa. And he sort of styles himself on this kind of thing. And he is there in in Nigeria dealing with sort of some of the after effects of um, colonialism and various other things and its impact on Nigeria. But in the meantime, it's also this very bizarre self-styled character. So Andy Africa, the, the opening char uh, chapter is all him talking about how he really um, wants to be with a blonde woman. Um, and it's this sort of really bizarre bit of writing where he's talking about, you know, like he's never actually met a blonde woman before, but he really thinks that that will be um, this brilliant thing. And in, in, there's a sort of, there's an underlying nod and a wink from the author almost that this is a complete, this is sort of farcical and ridiculous. And a large part of the reasons why he might be thinking this are also twinned intimately with things like colonialism um, in the sense that, you know, 
sort of whiteness is sort of pushed to the front as the the sort of the top image of beauty. And in the meantime, we get all this weird and wonderful sets of story. Uh, the the sorrowful mysteries um, seems to be a reference to sort of a religious um, a religious story. And so the the parts of the book, he sort of is recounting his own mysteries, but in the same vein, it's sort of there's this oddly religious overtone of it being, you know, fighting against this sort of fate foretold. It's it's a bizarre book. Um, I listened to it as an audiobook, and I think that worked quite nicely to kind of capture the sort of bombastic element of this book. It's so in your face and bold and kind of ridiculous at times. But I think underlying that is a real sort of intelligent core of, of sort of what it's trying to go for. Um, so yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it and was sort of completely, I, I again, I mean, I have no idea what I was expecting from it. Whatever it was that I was expecting was not this. And I enjoyed where this took me as a reader. It was a very, very weird and wonderful book, but kind of, uh, yeah, a really fun ride, I think, nonetheless. And last but absolutely not least um, was Linda Grant's The Story of the Forest. And I, like, partly, you know, I saw the cover and was like, ooh, that looks pretty. Um, and I was thinking, you know, I've been wanting to read something of hers before. She was previously shortlisted for the Booker. She's previously won the Women's Prize. And so I was sort of like, okay, like, I will at some point read something by her. I'm kind of intrigued. Um, and this is a very pretty cover. And then it got shortlisted for the Orwell Prize. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> fine, I'll, I'll read it. And this is just an absolutely stunning book, I think. Um, it's, so it, it sort of is a bit of a family epic, even though it's only just under 300 pages. Um, and that family epic starts with um, a forest um, in Latvia, and particularly the sort of political situation where a young girl, Mina, is sort of living a fairly sort of agricultural, rural life and um, in the sort of midst, in the background going on around her are lots of political situations, particularly around um, the sort of Soviet, the Soviet Union and the impact of that on Latvia. Um, and so suddenly lots of her life gets turned around and she is also Jewish and within that kind of within that kind of time, the sort of Jewish populations in Europe were often kind of having to move quite regularly or they were targeted often by certain political parties. So we sort of get this mapping of this this sort of family moving to the UK and then building this brand new life. And although that sounds like a fairly typical story, I think what it then does next is really quite impressive. It takes that sort of immigrant story, but it, it this book, I think, is obsessed in the best way with the power of stories and the ways that this idea of the of young girl in a forest, you know, um, carries through and has echoes of in the current day. And so it's a book that is telling a very, very beautiful story very beautifully um, already. And then it has this other element that I think is really interesting about the power of stories. And we then have her daughter who goes on to be a film star and, um, well, in one particular film called The Story of the Forest, which looks back at this sort of idea. And for some audiences, they think it's an, a really amazing story. And for others, they don't, they think it's this sort of slightly ridiculous fabricated myth. And the book then starts to play with it. And I, I think I already was really enjoying the story, especially really enjoying the telling of the story, that the writing in this is gorgeous and, and really sumptuous. And it doesn't linger um on an image for too long it sort of tends to to float over images but in it will kind of drop these really beautiful descriptions and then sort of move on and there's something so masterful about the way i think it's done and i was already really enjoying this and then i got to sort of about the last 40 or 50 pages and there were some passages that i just thought were some of the most incredible writing just really um poignantly observed, um, I'm getting a bit emotional thinking about this, uh, really poignantly observed bits of writing about death and loss and memory. And it was just so well handled and so sensitively and, and, and sort of poignantly done that, um, that I, I, it just really captured me. I just thought it was a, a really stunningly 
achieved sort of uh, stunning achievement in terms of how it was written and so that was just such a gorgeous end to this book and particularly to these uh, this idea of the stories and memories that we hold on to and what they say about our lives um you know in the meantime we we sort of see a lot of how the the jewish characters in this book are treated awfully and what's really heartbreaking is yeah at one point there's a a, a postcard reference in this book um which is this sort of full of this really anti-semitic awful stuff and then in the postscript, uh, the author, the afterward, the, the author talks about how this was something that was received by her family. And it's just a bit of a, you know, it, it's just, it's really quite shocking and horrible to to read that and then think about this, this sort of the real life ramifications of this. I'm going to do probably a separate review on this book because I just think it's a, a stunning work of, of literature. Um, but yeah, a really great reading week topped off by this um i think so yeah um those have been the books i've read this week um i hope you are having a really good reading week and uh take care and speak to you all soon bye bye